In the meantime, we've been watching gold all summer long. It is on pace right now for a three-day skid, but so what? It's been a breakout summer for bullion. Just look at the three-month chart. We can flip it over to that, and you will see that gold gained 12% during that time period. But let's back it up even further. The classic safe haven play traded in a fairly narrow margin from January through June, but then skyrocketed to six-year highs as central banks, not just here, but around the world, shift to policies of easing. Should you, the investor, dive into some gold and make a mint, or should you be looking for a golden parachute? We're joined now by three of the most important voices in gold in, in the gold investing world. Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro-Pacific Capital from Puerto Rico. From Toronto, Frank Holmes, CEO of U.S. Global Investors. And here in New York, Ema Casanova of Vanex Gold and Precious Metals Strategy. We decided to go all gold bull, not a bull bear debate, so I get to sort of play the bear, even though I, I think it's an interesting trade, certainly right now. But Frank, I'll begin with you. You know, just about every scenario in history, when the central banks were in easing, that was an immediate flip on switch for gold investing. One goes down, and then we see gold move up. Is that what we're seeing right now, where central banks are easing, so gold is the trade to have right now? Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, it's important to recognize what they call PMI, Purchasing, Purchasing Manufacturers Index. And it's been falling globally for the past 15 months. So now there's great concern of recessions in Europe in particular. Uh, and so that's driving zero interest rates. And in fact, in Denmark, they pay you to take out a mortgage. So any time you get this sort of run up, so we get each month we're seeing more and more governments offering you a negative real rate of return on your money and that automatically makes gold much more attractive and i don't think it's ended yet ema what do you think has been the driver beyond something like the central banks gold came back in favor after being in a range bound trend for the past uh, six years in that 1100 to 1300 dollar range in June, it broke off. It passed the $1,365 level. It broke to $1,400, and now we're sitting right above $1,500. A little bit of a pullback last week. But the driver there was the Fed. What is the Fed signaling when they are shifting, when they're going from tightening to cutting? They're saying, we, too, are worried about the U.S. economy. And investors responded to that to the higher risk of a recession in the U.S. Peter, we're looking on the screen that China added about 16 tons of gold to its reserves in just July and August alone, 100 tons over the past 12 months. You know, you've got China stockpiling. Does that play into the picture? Oh, absolutely. In fact, they're going to keep buying and other foreign central banks are going to buy. You know, the dollar is actually very weak. People have been looking at the dollar versus other fiat currencies. Uh, but if you look at the dollar's decline against gold, that really tells you that we have a weak dollar, not a strong dollar. And I think it's going to get a lot weaker. And I think foreign central banks are starting to position for the dollar losing its reserve currency status. And it's going to lose that status not to another currency, but to real money, to gold. And that's why uh, central banks are buying they're going to keep buying and individuals should be buying as well. Okay. Uh, Frank, you say that you feel the same way, that individuals should be buying and here's the dollar right now versus uh, the euro. It's at about 10. I, I look at that strength and I think, so that's kind of separate of what's going on with gold. You do have these central banks that are, are picking up a lot of gold. That's an indication also that we have economic slowdowns. You mentioned uh, what we see with manufacturing. Give us a sense of what happens if this turns around. What if the trade war ends and suddenly we have blue sky scenario for equities once again? Well, the trade war may end, and I believe it will. There's some resolution will take place. But it's not going to turn around immediately, Liz. It takes time. And Europe is already, in for much longer period, in a more in direction of a hard recession versus America. So I think, you know, you want to be long the love trade of gold and you want to be long the Trump trade uh, because we're, we're basically dropping interest rates in still an expanding economy. Uh, the tea leaves are saying we're going to have a slowdown, but any time that's happened, the stock market actually does spectacularly well, mm -hmm. and so does gold. And the best actual trade are gold stocks, and this would happen in 2002 to 2006. Well, then you could look at, say, for example, um, some of the gold ETFs. Uh, you, of course, have a fund, Frank, a GOAU, and then there's 
the, um, the, the GLD, there are a whole bunch of funds, but Ema, you talk to me right now about where this goes. I mean, what is your 12-month outlook for the price of bullion? We have a very positive gold outlook. In the near term, we see gold trading at higher levels, $1,400, $1,500 level. I think the eleven to $1,300 level is in the past. In the longer term, we think there are plenty of risks within the financial system that should elevate gold to higher levels. We're talking setting new all-time highs. Okay. And Peter, what about you? What's your outlook? And again, I'll ask you the same question I asked Frank. What if we strike a trade deal and the economy reverses and that means that the Fed stops cutting rates? What happens to gold then at that point? Well, first of all, we're going into recession regardless of what happens with the trade talks. And the Fed is taking rates down to zero. Uh, so that's what's going to happen. But if you look back at what happened to the price of gold, gold was under 300 in 2001. It got up to 1900 in 2011 when people were rightly concerned about the monetary policy mistakes that the Fed was making. Well, then people believed the Fed that everything was going to work out, that they could unwind their balance sheet and normalize interest rates. And gold pulled back to just over 1,000. It's now risen 50% off those lows because people are just starting to figure out that none of these problems were solved. In fact, the Fed has screwed up to a greater degree than even I imagined back in 2011. They have done a lot of damage to the economy, and the gold price has headed a lot mm -hmm. higher. The initial reaction was correct. The, 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 the QE and 0% interest rates were a big mistake, and the only winner there is going to be people who bought gold and silver. Peter, Frank, Ema, a nice discussion about the yellow metal. We focused only on gold. I know our gold bug viewers are absolutely thrilled about that, but you've got to watch it here. Six-year highs just a couple of weeks ago.